Inflation is directly proportional to the money that is produced out of thin air within a fractional reserve banking system. No other result is ultimately possible. Inflation is a slow robbery that does two things. It devalues savings and inflates asset prices, forcing people to spend and gamble. It stimulates consumption, on a planet where everything is finite. Inflation completely warps supply and demand and over time, leads to shortages of essentials and overproduction of garbage. Inflation exists as one of many wealth transfer mechanisms. It's a casino where some do win, but only at the expense of someone else losing. And of course, the parasite institutions get to collect a convenience fee for doing God's work. Supposedly taxes are collected for the privilege of us using the Fed's money. Yet somehow even transactions not involving fiat are taxed equally. Even if you barter, you're supposed to pay taxes issued in the currency that was nowhere near during the exchange. I mean, come on. We all know that the foundation of the modern economy rests on lies upon lies. Instead of maintaining equilibrium, inflation favors growth. When growth stops, everything collapses. Money vanishes, and only assets remain. All the collateral pledged goes back to the bank when they yank the carpet. That's what it's all about. The game auto terminates when the bank owns everything there is, and in over 100 years of Fed's existence, we're almost there. It's by design. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Here's a strange headline for you. Gold prices near daily highs despite better than expected inflation in October. This headline is bizarre on a couple of levels. First, since when are rising consumer prices and good news? And second, why wouldn't inflation be good for gold? You really have to buy into the mainstream narratives to write that headline. Consumer prices did, in fact, come in higher than expected in October, according to the latest Labor Department report. The consumer price index increased by 0.4% last month. In the 12 months through October, CPI came in at 1.8%. Core CPI was up 2.3% after a 2.4% rise in September. This is better than expected. Better. Think about that for a moment. The headline writer is telling you that having to spend about 2% more every year on healthcare, recreation, vehicles, and rent is right for you. Congratulations. Of course, the reason the mainstream considers this good news is because the Federal Reserve intentionally tries to maintain a 2% inflation rate. Yes. The central bankers think it's essential for your spending power to decrease every single year. Mainstream pundits will also tell you that rising inflation is bad news for gold. The headline hinted at this fact. Gold was pushing daily highs, despite the inflation report. This is because pundits expect the Federal Reserve won't cut rates anymore if inflation heats up. Heck, it may even raise rates. This is entirely backward thinking. In the first place, while higher CPI data may slow the Fed's role on rate cuts, Fed Chair Jerome Powell has already indicated he has no intention of raising rates, even if inflation heats up. He said that it would take a really significant and persistent move up in inflation before the central bank considers rate hikes. Basically, Powell conceded that the Fed wasn't going to be vigilant about inflation. As Peter Schiff put it in a recent podcast, rate hikes are the furthest thing from their mind. They're not even considering raising rates right now. So, the only thing that they'll do is cut rates or leave them alone. This is a very dovish stand for the Fed to take. Probably the most dovish stance I've ever seen the Fed take with respect to its supposed tolerance for inflation. And regardless, despite what the Fed may or may not do, inflation is not bad news for gold. Keep in mind, an interest rate is nothing but a price. It's the price of money. When there is inflation, interest rates go up just like any other price. Contrary to popular belief, this is not bad for gold. Quite the opposite, this is all bullish for gold. Gold is an inflation hedge. That's what it's for. As Peter has explained, if you think there's going to be more inflation, you buy gold. But perversely, the way the markets work now, you sell gold if you think there's going to be more inflation. In fact, you buy the currency of the country that is experiencing more inflation, which is kind of counterintuitive because inflation, by definition, is the currency losing value. So, if the currency is losing its purchasing power, 
why would you want to buy more of it? As Peter pointed out, speculation about what the Federal Reserve may or may not do now drives the market more than this fundamental truth. Everybody thinks higher inflation increases the likelihood the central bank will raise interest rates and embark on tighter monetary policy. Peter compared inflation to a fire. The Fed is going to have to ignore the fire. That means it will get worse. The fire will get bigger because the central bank thinks to put it out will do more harm than letting it burn. If traders understood this, that higher inflation just means that it's going to get even worse, then they would be dumping the dollar. They would be buying gold. Inflation does, it pushes money into non-depreciating assets. The problem is that people begin chasing appreciation instead of preservation. Even things such as gold go through ups and downs, and you don't know when you may need to cash out. You can buy gold high and sell low and still lose money. You can buy a rising asset, but the currency will plunge, nullifying gains, etc. The market pays more attention to the Fed rates than to the companies being bet on, and that is a cart before the horse situation. That is what distortion is. We should be valuing things based on their return potential and long-term sustainability. Instead, uncertainty causes people to chase short-term gains. Also, just like in a casino, if someone loses small, they try making up for losses by doubling the bets and lose their shirts. The actual casino is one thing, but we're talking about the platform that is designed to distribute vital resources to those who need them most, rewarding only the most efficient. Instead what do we have? A pump and dump wave of IPOs. Dead end startups that burn through cash. We get bailouts, subsidies, and a whole whack of things designed to counterbalance the flawed foundation. We are rearranging to roof tires to the right, the leaning tower of Pisa. The US dollar bought 100 cents worth of stuff in 1913. Today, the US dollar buys between 3 and 4 cents worth. The majority of sheep in America have no idea of the truth. That is, today, the US dollar is just a piece of paper with ink on it. It is a con game run by the Fed. The con stands for confidence. When that is gone, it will be Germany in 1922 here in America. In 1964 when quarters were 90% silver, gas was 25 cents a gallon. The current melt value of a 1964 silver quarter is $2.69. According to a Google map search the local price of a gallon of gas is $3.11 at Sam's Club and $3 at a regular station. This should tell you all you need to know about metal, inflation, and the demonic banksters and their compromised puppets in the US government. The reason some people are currently buying precious metals or paper gold is mainly due to the ongoing trend towards ever lower interest rates, negative interest rates, in the face of low inflation and growth, deflation. So, uncomfortable with the central bank's approach to monetary policy, people are increasingly looking for alternatives such as hard assets. Basically, it's a loss of confidence in the monetary authorities, and this trend first began in 2015 and had lots more room to go to. It's all about public trust. First, the big money or institutional money smells the problem. Next comes the retail investors, and lastly, the majority of people or the general public. Only when the least informed individuals figure out there is a real problem will confidence tank. At that time, gold will spike and then comes the end. The bankster cabal is now just about ready to topple the dollar, by way of the plan. Jim Rickards has been outlining and warning us of the fact that the banksters want to eliminate cash, so people have no way to make money out of their bank accounts as the banksters impose negative interest rates on their savings. This means people must use cash, that is still available, to buy gold and silver. So they can have their savings out of the banksters system when the banksters say pull it. The evil greedy banksters are raising interest rates on the American public's credit cards, at the same time, they are pushing rates lower to negative for bankster benefit. Perhaps the banksters see people buying gold on their credit cards, seeing as how Chase recently forgave the credit card debt of Canadians, and want to stop Americans from obtaining real money for free if Chase does the same in the US. Inflation has been ongoing in various forms, so the public doesn't catch on. You see it in the way of product shrinkage while the price stays the same. Most brands of orange juice are now 52 ounces instead of 64 ounces. In my area, a half gallon of milk has increased anywhere from 20 to 45 cents, which translates to $2.45 to 2.99 a half gallon. 
I'm seeing more and more seniors, 70 to 80 years old, working the checkout lanes because they can't make it on what they get from the government. Inflation is everywhere and has been for some time if you just know where to look. The purpose of having precious metals is to use them as an insurance policy that you can cash in if need be. There are, and will be, any number of dealers and companies who will buy your metals when, if the time comes. In the meantime, it is a good idea to have a small cache of ready cash on hand. Save what you can, even $5 to $10 per week, if possible, would be good. Puerto Ricans who were caught off guard by the hurricane a couple of years ago found out the hard way that digital methods of payment are of no use when the electrical grid goes down. I'm not worried about making my house payment in the event of a financial meltdown, and I just want to be able to buy necessities until banks reopen. Once the banks reopen, I'll pay my mortgage payment. One way to use silver is to get some, junk, or constitutional silver coins, pre-1964 dimes and quarters and half dollars up to 1970, or fractional silver rounds in one-tenth, one-quarter, and one-half ounce sizes. They are a little more expensive but might be usable under the right circumstances. The same goes for gold. Fractional coins and bars are more accessible to obtain than a full one-ounce bar or coin. I always check my change when I get quarters and dimes because you might just get lucky and get a pre-1964 coin. That is like getting free silver. It is rare, but I have gotten a quarter and half dollar like that. You need to have some silver. Fortune favors the prepared. Do what you can and make sure to cultivate relational ties with others in your area. People can do a lot when they all work together. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.